there once was a couple who were married for 30 years. In that 30 years, they'd managed to have sex every day of their marriage. One day, the woman didn't feel well and she went to the doctor. The doctor told her that she would have to rest for six months, including abstaining from sex, or she would die. The couple went home and set up separate bedrooms. For three months, it all went off without a hitch. But one night, the husband lay in bed and couldn't take it anymore. He got up and headed for his wife's bedroom. At the same time, she got up from her bedroom. They bumped into each other in the hallway. What are you doing? inquired the curious husband. I was going to die, said the wife. Oh, I'm so glad, said the husband, because I was going to your room to kill you. I love this joke because it crosses a line. I mean, is it about life? Is it about death? Is it about sex? Or is it about love? It seems to blur the distinction between all of those. The other thing I dig about this joke is where it came from. I got this joke from, believe it or not, the Encyclopedia of Death, which sounds like the punchline to a joke, but it's not. And yes, indeed, I do own the Encyclopedia of Death. It's graced my shelf for uh, decades, frankly. Why would someone other than a hospice worker own such a curiosity? Good question. Memento mori is a Latin phrase meaning, remember you must die. The Encyclopedia of Death contains a detailed entry on memento mori, which is why I bought the book. Far from being simply morbid, the sense of remembering that you must die has a long history. For centuries, memento mori has been an admonition to better behavior, inducement to ethical bearing, and wielded as an intensifier of the good life in the here and now. Well at least according to the Encyclopedia of Death. Remember that you must die. It sticks with you. Christians of the Middle Ages got wise to it. They employed the concept to scare people into scripture. It was very effective. Memento Mori is still around today. The skull and bones seen on t-shirts and album covers and tattoos, these stem from the same tradition. Indeed, Memento Mori is everywhere. No joke. There was a businessman who died in his old age. In life, he had not been a good steward of his fellow man. Quite the opposite. He'd been a real sleaze, so he was sent straight to hell. Arriving in hell, he found himself waist deep in sewage, along with a few other people. Along the shore were hideous demons with large heads and sharp teeth who were cracking whips with a loud snap. But the demons called the people over to the shore and gave them donuts on a silver platter. The man bit into the donut and it was sumptuous. This is not going to be so bad, he thought to himself. I don't regret anything I did in life. This will be fine. Just then, as he was finishing the last bite of his donut, a particularly large and hideous and sharp-toothed demon walked over to the shore and cracked its whip. All right, everybody, the demon barked. Back to standing on your heads. Breaks over. For years, I lived in a small town where I had friends who hailed from Mexico and maintained certain regional traditions. Among those friends were a gentleman from Mexico City and his gringa wife. The couple threw a Dia de los Muertos party every year, right after Halloween. The centerpiece of the celebration was a table with a full spread of food. The food, however, was not for eating, that is, not to be eaten by the living. It was food for the dead. Alongside the beans and tortillas and cakes on the table, guests were invited to place photographs of deceased loved ones. Every year, the table was full. That was where we would honor the dead and, in a manner of speaking, feed their memory. The Day of the Dead is most known for its skeletons, which are made into toys, sugar skulls, life-size puppets, drawings, and so on. This is the Calavera. 
The calavera walks among us and teases our sense of being alive, like a jolly and animated memento mori whose antics include satire. Often, calaveras are the stars of scenes presented in little boxes called miniaturas. One of my favorite miniaturas displays several skeletons attending the funeral of another skeleton. The caption for the box reads, No somos nada. We are nothing. A lesser known version of the calavera is a written form, little bits of verse in which the author eulogizes living friends. It's a daring exercise, I know, because I decided to undertake it myself. And out of this exercise came a book of verse called Perishable. Perishable. That jar should have had a label. Garden grown, the green tomatillos are roasted, but never fully cooked. They don't last. Eat this right away, Hugo said, handing over the jar of his own salsa verde, still warm. And for those who didn't listen well, the sauce did spoil. To the others, good eats? It's an old family recipe, he said. Enjoy. That's it. Goodbye. And enjoy. Thank you.